Welcome back to Rosecroft. Ted Andrews, the winning trainer tonight, a fancy crown. Ted, you said you've been bringing her along a little slower and getting her ready for this race, laying her rest up a little bit since the Kentucky Futurity. She certainly looks strong tonight. Well, she was terrific tonight, and I was really tickled with her performance. And, uh, you know, after you're off three weeks, you get a little apprehensive about whether you've trained her enough or trained her too much or just how, you know, how she's going to react after that layoff. But uh, she was very good, and I was pleased. Obviously, she is the fastest filly. Is she the one of the better fillies of all times? How would you rank her? Well, uh, from what I know of the other fillies, I think I think she's the best filly that's ever, uh, a three-year-old filly, certainly, that's ever been on a racetrack. Is she the horse of the year? I sure hope so. This should convince somebody. <laughs> what is ahead now for Fancy Crown this season, Ted? Will you be back on the track with her? Well, we have to decide. There may be one one other race for her, possibly. Uh, if we can get a race for her within the next couple of weeks on a 5 mile track, we may take that and see how we do. Maybe more interesting right now as a four-year-old and you look ahead to the Breeders' Crown which will have divisions next year for age trotters and age pacers. Maybe looking for Fancy Crown coming back next year as a four-year-old? Well, she may be there. We haven't decided yet. Thank you very much, Ted. Thank you. Ken. Congratulations. Thank you. Ted Andrews, the trainer of the winner tonight, Fancy Crown. We have the one to two favorite winning in the Breeders' Crown Series. Sharon? Well, Kenny, of course, all racing fans hope that she'll be back next year, but I think a lot of people would like to see a fall out of her as well. Let's hope the racing fans win if there's a battle between them. So a wonderful victory by Fancy Crown, and she wins the bulk of the purse, but uh, all first five finishers do win money as well. In second place is Petoliana, third place Selena Lobel, form certainly her held in the first three places, headhunter fourth, and Maiden Yankee was fifth. And Kurt? Uh, it's always a treat to see a great horse win a race. Well, and she did so, did so in such commanding fashion. Uh, she got control of the race, dominated the pace. Uh, O'Donnell was able to relax her down to an easy half in a minute and three-fifths. And then, it's, you know, for all intents and purposes, the race was over at that point because uh, when Selena did attack a little bit over on the back stretch, uh, O'Donnell just gave her a head and uh, she trotted away from the field. Well, we saw a world champion tonight in our next Breeders' Crown race. We're going to see a whole bunch of world champions. It's a three-year-old Philly pace, and it uh, takes place at Liberty Bell near Philadelphia. And uh, quite a field in that race. Yes, that's next Friday, and there are four world champion fillies in that race. Naughty But Nice, uh, Hit Parade, uh, Don't Dally, and uh, Mylin Hanover, who have all been world champions at one time or another. There's ten fillies in the race. Naughty But Nice through the rail. Hit Parade has the two-hole. It should be a ding-dong battle. Those fillies will rattle right out of there. And Not Even Nice is a magnificent filly. She won the Little Brown Jugette. And in her most recent race, uh, she lost, but she was the uh, horse that, that pushed on the road again to his uh, good track record at Roosevelt. So uh, Not Even Nice probably is going to be the favorite in the race, but with four world champions, uh, what can you say about that? Great race coming up next Friday here on ESPN. And we look at Fancy Crown, the winner of this race. And we will say goodbye to all of you from Rosecroft. Goodbye to Fancy Crown as well. We've enjoyed being